It's an iconic phrase of 2018 Fortnite, where are we dropping boys? These days most people know where they're going before they even reach the training island and that's because they have what we call a drop spot. But there will always come a time when you need a new place to land, either because yours was destroyed or it's just not working for you. Whether you're a casual player who just wants somewhere to learn in a relaxed manner with your friends or a competitive player who needs to learn something as well as possible, I've got all the info on how you should choose a drop spot and then how to develop your plans and strategies to be the best players there every time. I get asked to pick new drop spots for people quite often and when that happens the first thing I always ask is whether they want a POI or a split drop. When I say POI which stands for point of interest I simply mean a place that is named on the map and a split drop is basically anywhere that is not named. Sometimes people know which type of drop they want sometimes they don't so let me first explain a few differences because they are very contrasting places compared to each other. A POI tends to have a lot of loot in a small space. You'll be able to go from room to room or building to building, picking up many chests and floor spawns. You're likely to have a loadout and max shield within one or two minutes if you loot efficiently and don't have too much bad luck. And maybe in two to three minutes you'll have spare shield and decent enough weapons to play out your whole game. On the other hand, a split drop can take a lot longer to get the same amount of loot. Everything is found over a larger area with chests very spread out and generally a lot less floor spawns. Maybe you have a gas station or a vault or something else that you can get a full loadout in, but for spare shield and decent weapons, you may need several more minutes than you would in a POI. The other major difference between them is other teams landing near you. POIs tend to be more contested and therefore you may have to fight to survive either immediately or shortly after looting up. You'll have some natural cover with the buildings, but you may get cornered in them and this can actually make surviving even harder. In a split drop, the fights are likely to be more open and potentially difficult to disengage from if you're in a standoff without enough mats. With this openness and maybe lack of natural cover, it's even more important that you get your mats up early. Which one is better though? Well, there is no objective answer to that. Many players have preferences for one or the other, and that might be you. But if not, I'd simply recommend that you try both options out and see what you feel most comfortable with. How about where the location is on the map? Not all areas of the map are created equal. The most obvious attribute is whether it's on the edge of the map or in the center, or maybe it's somewhere in between. It should really go without saying, but if you are uncomfortable or just plain bad at long rotations, then you should strongly consider avoiding the edge of the map. Having said that, you'll never learn to rotate properly from the edge of the map if you never try it. So if that's a skill you already have or want to add, then you can land on the edge. Otherwise, stick to somewhere more central. Even then, not all edge locations are created equal. If you've watched my video on zones, you'll know that the north and west get more zones than the south and the east. So if you are extremely confident even when you get bad zones, you may find some quieter spots on the southeast edge where nobody else wants to go because of the zones. On the other hand, if you have no idea how to rotate, stick to the center or maybe slightly to the north or west. Having said earlier that I get asked quite a bit to plan people's drop spots, the question is more often phrased as what is the best drop spot? And the answer is there is no such thing as a best drop spot. And this is for two reasons. Firstly, as we've already gone through, drop spots are a personal preference. Secondly, drop spots tend to balance out. I don't mean that the amount of loot is the same at all of them. I mean that the more plentiful the loot is at a drop spot, the more teams will land there. And if there are too many teams landing somewhere, some teams will probably change their drop spot. And if nobody's landing somewhere, some teams will realize this and start going there. In a way, this means that drop spots are a self-balancing system. But there are always inefficiencies in this balance when humans are involved. It takes time for people to realize these things. So if you're one of the first to catch on to how good a drop spot is or how uncontested it is, you can take advantage of it or if you can discover a way to play a drop spot that other people haven't realized, again, you have an advantage. Aside from finding hidden gems, really you need to see what you're comfortable with. We already mentioned whether you want a POI, split drop, edge map or center map, and there are usually other things that make one drop spot different to another. Like recently, we've had some places with cars and some without, and before that, having Spider-Man web shooters at your drop was a big factor. Well, once you figure out what you want from your drop spot, you'll have a much shorter list to choose from, and you can start giving them a go. Let's say you've now got somewhere to land. The next thing you need is a loot path. The start of your loot path is where you first touch down on the ground. Usually you want to drop somewhere that has several floor spawns or a chest or two, so you will always get some sort of weapon. And also it should have a commanding position over everyone else in the area. The most common place for this would be at the top of a building. 
Then you want to be the quickest person to that spot in every game. The best way to do that is to have a drop spot map. If you don't know what that is, it's a map with markers surrounding your drop spot that indicate where you should dive down to in order to perfectly glide to your chosen chest or weapon. If your glider is activated at that marker, then you will be perfect for your drop, and you pick which marker to use depending on where the bus path is. If you don't want to spend hours making one yourself by loading into hundreds of games and slowly adjusting your markers again and again, well my paid Discord service has over a hundred of these already made by the best in the business, so you can request two of them every single month for the $5 subscription fee, as well as having access to the many other useful features that are included there. The one I show you here is totally fake and mocked up by me in about one minute, so don't try using it. Anyway, once you have your drop spot map and you can land perfect every single time, you need to know which direction you're going after that in order to stay safe and to get as much loot as possible. You may want to use the battle lab feature of the game for this so that you can load in without anyone else there and just plan. You want to be efficient, which means taking short paths that go through as many chests as possible. Look for ways that you can destroy walls or floors instead of taking longer routes around, or just go through places that have a ton of loot and chests close together. Now let's talk about fighting off spawn. You've hopefully carved out a small advantage by having the best drop and the most efficient loot path. Now you need to capitalize by wiping out your opposition. Now there's no set way to design off spawn strategies. It requires imagination and of course some common sense and logic. Imagine where other people might land around you. Some obvious things are to figure out what angles you might be able to find on them and how to keep yourself safe from them. If you're playing duos, look for possible ways to isolate one of the opposing team to quickly 2v1 them, or find a strategy where you can pinch inwards from two different sides towards them. The more you land somewhere, the more you learn from your mistakes and successes. Planning and experience have to come together to be the best off-spawn players. Remember you'll also need backup plans. What if someone is out dropping you? You need a backup drop that you can swerve off to with your glider out to land safely, and you'll need to know everywhere around there to be able to adapt and improvise. Hopefully that's something you'll pick up as you play your drop spot more and more, and surviving the scuff situations is extremely important, so don't take it lightly. Some of you are probably still fretting about where to land, so if you want personalised help on any of these things, I did mention my premium Discord service earlier. In the first subscription tier, you'll get some drop maps, points estimates and things like that. But if you want to chat to me individually to plan your game strategy, including discussing and choosing drop spots and rotations, then there is a higher tier called Premium Plus, which is a $10 add-on to Premium for a total of $15 per month, and we will work together there to plan everything for you. I guess to summarise what I've been talking about, we can say that planning is everything. There's a reason why most pros land at the same spot for a whole season or even longer. The more experience you have, the better you'll be, and you'll be able to beat other teams that are supposedly better than you, but who have not prepared properly. I hope you found that helpful. See you next time.